so I am back from my little trip to Skyline Drive to film that intro sequence. If you enjoyed that little intro, it'd be nice if you could subscribe, it'd be much appreciated, and turn on the notification bell. A lot of you might not have that turned on, so it'd be appreciated, and dropping a like also helps a lot too. And without any further ado, let's get into the tutorial, starting with how to grade Canon Log 3. Afterwards, I'm going to do a comparison between Canon Log and Canon Log 3 and showing what the dynamic range difference is. Um, but for now, we're just going to start off with my grading problem. So this clip was shot in 4K 60 FPS, so I'm just going to slow it down to 40% just so we have um, frames looking good and not being cut out. Um, it doesn't really matter for color grading too much because you're used to just looking at one frame. But um, yeah, so if we start with our base, um, you start with your base and then you're going to add a node using Alt S and go node label. I'm just going to label this CST, which stands for Color Space Transform, which I've searched up over here in the OpenFX panel. And I'm just going to grab the Color Space Transform effect, drag it over, and this is what's going to take our footage from the flat um, an unfinished look and turn it into something that we can work with, which is going to be Rec 709, are going to be color space and gamma. So I'm going to start with our input color space, which is what this is starting with, um, and that is the Canon Cinema Gamut, which you can find by scrolling down. And there you go, that looks kind of weird straight up. But once you change the input gamma, you have to set that to Canon Log 3. We're starting to get some changes here. And then we're going to go down a bit more to where is Rec 709? Right there, I looked, I was looking right at it. And we're gonna change the output color space to Rec 709, and then the output gamma also to Rec 709, and boom, we have a great thing there. And I'm just gonna change this to luminance mapping, and that will save us a bit more dynamic range. So this is what a Canon Log 3 shot would look like when transcoded to Rec. 709. And I think that looks pretty good. It's definitely very saturated. Um, later in the video there was going to be a comparison between um, Canon Log 3 and Canon Log. And for some reason Canon Log 3 is much more sat saturated right out of the gate. And it's, it's interesting, I'm cool with that because you can always dial back saturation. And before I go on to add my own look to this, what I'm going to do is just add a note. I'm going to do all my start all my adjustments there. We're going to go back to the base to do our general exposure corrections. And this is my grading process here. But usually, you're just going to want to go back here to the first node, your base, and just kind of adjust the lift, gamma, and gain, and kind of just work around and see what looks best. I personally like having dark shadows. Now, you have to be careful with catalog any catalog profile, catalog 1, 2, or 3, try to expose for straight on center exposure or overexposed. It's sometimes better to be overexposed. If you underexpose, you're gonna, the shadows are just gonna be crushed. Um, and you, I, it seems like I have a good amount of data in the shadows, but it is kind of cr sort of clumped together, you can see in the waveform here. But it's not the end of the world because I was going to crush anyways on the shot. And um, just by lowering the lift there, it looks pretty good. Now I'm going to raise the gamma to get some more detail out in the midtones. And lower the lift once more. And that's looking really nice. And the gain, we have all this dynamic range in the highlights. Um, and that looks pretty good. Um, however, I do kind of like to have a good transition from... Uh, black to white in the image and we are starting to get there if you see over in the waveform up here we're getting um, from the darkest pixel to the brightest pixels up here um, as you can see actually they're probably over here and now that we have our basic corrections you see um, that's pretty much what we've done very minimal I mean you can add some more contrast if you like but I like it where it is and now oh, oops, there so now I'm gonna actually start my personal grading process um, which it, you, you would do pretty much whatever adjustments you'd like at this point. I'm just going to type in grade and I'm just going to go through my grading process here. And typically what I like to do is add a bit more contrast and then I'm going to go into the shadows, highlights, maybe lower the midtone detail to soften it up a little bit. Sometimes this footage can come out looking very digital and over sharpened, but this is looking pretty good so far. And now I'm going to go into the curves, maybe adjust that a little bit. 
try to get some more contrast. You see there is a lot of information in the shadows here. Just hard to bring it out. That kills it right there. This is not raw footage, it's 10 bit though, so that's that's a good thing. And then maybe bring down the highlights a bit. And as you can see, what I've done here, I've caused the highlights to go up a bit more. So we can go back into the gain and dial that back down. And as you see, we have plenty of dynamic range. I still want to make sure I have some pixels touching white. And now I'm going to go into adjusting the colors. This is what I like to do personally. I'm just going to change the hue of this and make it a bit deeper of a green there. And then I'm going to desaturate it because that's what I like to do. Now, as you can see, we certainly have a lot of detail in the blues here. And I'm not, I don't want to lose that, but I do like having the waterfall being pretty um, white because I think usually, yeah, there sure is sometimes a, a blue spill. And if we play back here, yeah, that looks pretty great. So um, there's usually just one more thing I like to do to shots like this. If there is bright highlights, like this is actually pretty good dynamic range seeing that the sun is, I think, right above um, there or like over here. Very bright up there. Um, but the dynamic range is pretty great. So just I wish that I had exposed this differently or framed it up so it was a bit less um, bright because we're going to start to clip data there. And as you can see, it doesn't look too pretty or the gain a bit. And then that contrast a bit more. Okay, that looks good. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a glow. And this is something that I like to do that just kinda, if there are bright highlights in my images, it makes it a lot less harsh and makes it a bit more um, smooth in terms of its roll off. So I'm gonna go change, this is, um, I did a tutorial on diffused highlights effect. This is just basically a faster way of doing it. Um, I'll link the full diffused highlights effect in the video. Um, but basically what this does is makes it very glowy. And as you see, if we, we can control how glowy it is, and it's very glowy right there. And I think right around here is looking pretty good. I'm just gonna go back into my curves here and go to just the red. I'm gonna take out some of the red in the shadows to cool off the shadows a bit. Yeah, so you can try, there's lots of different things you can do. Obviously, if you have your own personal grading style, that's the best thing you can do. I'm just kind of going through my process here. What I just did was I went to Loom versus Saturation page, and I made it so that the brightest parts of the image and the darkest parts of the image will be um, pure black and pure white, um, having no saturation, because we don't want the shadows to be tinted. I did add in a bit of... Um, bluish tint to the footage by, um, you know, kind of adding in a bit of blue there just to cool it off, but there is a need for it to be pitch black at the um, actual darkest parts of the image. And I mean, we are losing a lot of detail in the shadows there, so I can actually raise that. Oh yeah, that's looking a lot better. Um, probably not actually though, that's, ooh. use the gamma. And then we'll just contrast highlights down a bit more we can yeah we have room to do that our highlights aren't clipping technically so we could do that but it would look really bad it wouldn't have like a natural contrast so I'm gonna keep it so my highlights are touching the brightest parts of the image and I'm just gonna desaturate the greens and all that a bit more and it is a bright day it's probably better to desaturate the greens when it is like overcast cloudy and you're gonna get the best light when it is cloudy overcast or even raining because the sky is completely one tone and it acts as like one giant diffuser for the sun and the lighting becomes very even this is very uneven lighting not my favorite lighting to work with but as you can see the shot looks quite great and uh yeah i'm just gonna take these two clips and put them on the timeline here and uh, the first one was shot in Canon C-Log 3, and then the second one here was shot in Canon C-Log 1. So this clip is C-Log 3. As you see, I, I just had two almost identical clips for, um, you know, matching purposes. And obviously it's very flat, both are very flat, but this is certainly flatter. Let's go over to our waveform here, and we'll see that we have a lot of data 
in the C-Log3. I tried to get this as even as an exposure as I could. I think I might have been a slight bit over exposed. Um, so if we can't compare the data in the waveform from C-Log3 to C-Log1, it's a little bit interesting. You have a lot more detail, it's just more compressed because the um, gamma curve is much flatter and we are appearing to get a bit more dynamic range but we're going to see how that actually turns out and I have to find out by correcting it into Rec 709. Click on that and boom, we already have a pretty good result there but um, it's outputting to whatever the um, timeline color space is and I forget what I had it set to. So I'm just going to set it to Rec 709 right there and then output gamma Rec 709 and that is pretty great and now I'm just going to go over to the Canon Log 1 and apply the same grade but then change that so it's Canon Log and as you see um, there is a color cast which I'm not really sure what's up with that these are the exact same settings this is C-Log 3 this is C-Log and I'm liking the color out of C-Log 3 a lot better, which is really interesting. I don't know what specifically is up with that, but just a comparison here, look in the scopes. We're having a lot more dynamic range in the highlights. Um, we can honestly play around with this. I'm just gonna correct this. What I like to do is just um, use my lift gamma gain to get, you know, bring down the shadows, bring up you know, mid-tones, shadows a bit more down, very subtle, and then gain up a bit more. And we have all this dynamic range. And most it's mostly blue. I wasn't looking directly into the sun, but the sun is over here, sort of. So that's already looking quite well. I'm gonna add some contrast, and boom, that's looking great. Um, I do think it is, it's really saturated, which um, I'm surprised. It looks very um, true to life, pretty much straight out of camera, which is pretty impressive. I don't even know what's, I don't even know, I thought Canon Log 1 was great. But looking at this comparison here, I'll just apply that same correction and just make that Canon Log. If we're looking at just pure contrast and what you're able to get out of Canon Log 3, I think this is gonna look a lot better. Um, obviously I did crush the blacks there, I'm gonna lift that up a bit better. Um, it's, it's similar. I think something's weird with this one. There's like a purple cast to it. This one's a bit more bluish green? I don't know. So maybe there's something up with the color in the gamma profiles. This is the same white balance, literally shot like two seconds after um, each other. Like, there shouldn't be much of a difference in the settings. There isn't any difference in the settings. So. Anyways, that's just a comparison C-Log to C-Log 3. And obviously I'm thinking the C-Log 3 is much better and it's supposed to be better. I'm loving Canon Log 3. It's looking quite awesome. And I'm looking forward to filming with Canon Log 3 in the future on the R6. It's just super awesome and I am really enjoying it. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed, you know, obviously drop a like, subscribe. It's really appreciated. Um, getting close to 1,200 subscribers. So if you guys, Give me a little boost there, click that red button, subscribe, it'd be awesome. If you're able to turn on notifications for my channel, it would be much appreciated. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to share any comments you have in the comment section, um, that's where comments go. And uh, yeah, I'm interested in hearing what you guys kind of go for with your grades. And if you have something to say about the way I grade, I could be doing this completely wrong. Um, this is just kind of what I've come to learn over time, and yeah, my name's Jacques Jumani, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.